Zone. Today I'm going to be helping you with Halo Infinite Lasso. That is legendary all skull zone, and I've got to say, it is by far the easiest lasso because you get infinite ammo, and there's some really easy strategies to complete the game very quickly. My goal with this video is to give you some tips and tricks to make the overall game playthrough easier. Whether you're using the scorpion gun glitch or just a regular rocket launcher, the route you're going to take is exactly the same. If I was you personally, I would just use the scorpion gun because the rocket launcher is literally just a less powerful version of it, but it gets to fire two shots instead of one before it reloads. With the unlimited ammo and unlimited grenades and unlimited equipment, just taking your time and killing everything in every area is a breeze. For me personally, it took me six hours to complete the lasso campaign. I have done each boss fight, regular and with the scorpion gun, so I can give you tips if you're going to do both ways. So let's jump right into the video. First and foremost, we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna spend our Spartan cores on. And the number one thing is upgrading your shields. The Jackal Snipers with a Stalker Rifle will be a three hit kill. And with Black Eye, that could even turn into a one to two hit kill if you're not fully shielded. But if you upgrade your shields to the maximum amount, that three shot kill will turn into a five shot kill. And so many times it saved my life. The second most important thing is if you don't have full shields, you will not receive a checkpoint. Even if you capture a forward operating base, complete a mission, defeat a boss, if you don't have full shields, you will not receive a checkpoint. It will save your progress, so you can end the game and reload and it'll save up to your progress and you can't get sent back. But if you die and you didn't get a checkpoint, you can go back an entire mission. I went from the tower all the way back to when you first reach the surface, back through a cutscene, back through a boss fight, back through capturing a forward operating base. It's rough. There is no Iron Skull, which traditionally sends you all the way back, so I guess that makes up for it a little bit. Third and final point is with the Cowbell and the Boom Skull on, you can use grenades to fast travel with the grapple hook across the entire map. You guys have seen me launch across the map, throw a grenade down and grapple hook onto the end, and you can ride that momentum all the way across the map. The most useful time I found for that was for the mission after the tower, capture a forward operating base, and then you send yourself flying all the way to excavation site, and the mission where you have to go to the four towers, where you're free roaming across the entire map. If you don't have a wasp, capturing one forward operating base, throwing a grenade down, and launching all the way across the map is the way to go. You can just use the thruster pack to stop yourself in midair when you've gone far enough. My final tip slash trick before we get into the actual missions and boss fight is the invulnerability glitch on excavation site. To do the excavation site invincibility glitch, all you have to do is activate the cutscene, which will fire the mining laser beams and your game and reload. You won't lose any progress, grapple above it, and then just walk off the edge. While you're falling into the beams, bring up the map while you do this and then fast travel to any of the forward operating bases. This will make you invulnerable. You can get your shields back if you're hurt at all, and it'll give you access to completing those two islands, max out your character, get all the Spartan cores, all the forward operating bases, save all the Marines, get all your Valor up to unlock more equipment, take out the bosses to get special weapons. And you can do that with absolute certainty that you can't die because you're invulnerable. You can even break into other parts of the map as shown on screen now and capture the entire map. It really depends on how safe you want to make it for yourself. I understand some people will be like, well, that's not really lasso because you're just using a bug to give yourself invulnerability. So if you want to do it, go ahead. If you don't want to, just play it normally. You can lose your invulnerability once you enter a mission. So once you turn the laser beam off, from the mining site and actually go inside, you will then be able to take damage again. Don't do the big skip where you skip all the missions. It will only give you 70% completion and you won't get the lasso achievement. So with all that said, let's go into the very first mission. The good thing about Halo Infinite Legendary All Skulls on is you get every single grenade at the start of the game. So you can just spam shock grenades, which are easily the most powerful type of grenade and it will freeze all enemies so what you want to do is for the first couple corridors, just spam dynamo grenades, just slowly progress. If you have taken any damage, leave one grunt alive and use that to grapple spam your shields back. By grappling the grunt, you'll stun him, you'll punch him, which will stun him again. And because of the bandana skull, you can instantly grapple again, meaning you get three or four punches in, your shield back, and the grunt will die. 
pick up a rocket launcher from one of the brutes. There's going to be so many rocket launcher brutes to the thunderstorm skull and just progress through the mission normally. This first mission isn't very difficult. With the unlimited ammo and the tight corridors, you can pretty much just grenade spam. Once you melee the door three or four times, you can completely skip the whole bridge section of the mission, which is arguably the hardest part of the mission. You have to backtrack to actually hit the loading zone. After that, just continue all the way to the end of the mission, take it slow if you want to, and make sure you have shields at the end. After the cutscene, you'll land in the second mission, where you are going to get the weapon. As soon as you land, you want to end game immediately. If you die and you don't know if you've gotten a checkpoint or not, and that elite at the start, which is always an ultra elite because of the thunderstorm skull, kills you, you can go all the way back. By using your grapple hook, you can skip so many enemies. So take your time, use your rocket launcher because of the boom skull and the wide radius to just slowly pick off enemies. Up now is some cool grapple spots to skip major parts of the mission and make your life a hell of a lot easier. So I'll let them play out and then I'll instruct you on what to do next. Once you get through all of these areas, you're actually almost finished with the mission already. Get your shields back where you can to make sure you get checkpoints just in case you die. You're going to make your way to the first boss. Now for this first boss, the Needler is the best weapon. There'll be Needlers on the floor already from when you've killed enemies and you only need to pick up one. Any shield draining technique, the Dynamo Grenade is really good to just drain your shields and just spam him with Needler. That is the most effective way that I found to actually beat the first boss fight. It took me about 10 minutes to kill him. With Tremonius dead, we move on to the third mission, Outpost Tremonius. Very short mission, but it's a very special mission because it's the one where you get the Scorpion gun. It also has three Spartan Core locations that are very easy to pick up. So I'm going to put those locations on screen now. But the strategy to clear this mission very quickly is you're gonna turn around as soon as you hit the surface. When you get outside, climb up all the way around as shown on screen here. And we're gonna jump down right where the Scorpion gun actually is grab it if you're going to if not rocket launch is fine again i would recommend grabbing it and all you have to do is just clear out the ones on the platform when the phantoms come in blow them up a couple more jackals will come to try kill you and then the mission's done you don't have to kill anyone who's down below just clear out the landing zone once the mission is complete you can end the game reload it you'll have the same guns and grab the sniper rifle which is underneath the landing zone your health will be back and you won't have to worry about getting sent all the way back. Now, starting the fourth mission, you finally get to explore Zeta Halo. What I did was I grapple hooked all the way on top of the cliff and took out all of the enemies. Since you're full health, don't worry about leaving any of them alive, just snipe them all. Once they're all dead, drop down, capture the forward operating base and you should get a checkpoint because you're full shields. Next, you have two choices on what you can do. One, you can get a mongoose and use that to fly all the way across the map and land on top of the tower. Or two, slowly make your way across the map. You'll be running into enemies. You can grab a Spartan core on the way and capture another forward operating base. It really depends on how you want to play it. Once you reach the tower, there's a lot of jackal snipers. So take your time, make sure all the enemies are dead. There's some marines you can free here, which can be used as excellent cannon fodder. Complete the objectives, you can go up into the tower. And again, there's two Spartan cores in the tower, one before you go up the lift, one in the tower itself. So before or after the mission, make sure you grab them both. That'll give you a total of five or six cores. You're well on your way to maxing out your shields. Side note, this could also mean you're maxing out your grapple if you're doing the invulnerability glitch. Now, Chacklock was the one boss I couldn't cheese out. He was the one boss where I couldn't find somewhere where I could hide in a corner and slowly kill him over time. If you don't have great camo eyes, use your threat sensor to make him appear. 
However, the best way to kill him is to use your rockets to stun him since Cowbell is on. Combine that with throwing fusion coils at him. It's gonna take some time, you're gonna die a lot. But again, once he's defeated, the mission ends, you can end your game, reload, and you'll never have to verse him again. Staying on the move is the best way to avoid his sword hits, and any sort of weapon that can stun him can be used to get your shields back. If you can predict and see that he's going to jump at you and quickly hide behind a wall, you can quickly pop out and punch him once and then keep running around the map. With a lot of these bosses, staying on the move is gonna be the best way to stay alive. With Chaklock defeated, we're moving on to Excavation Site. You're going to want to head over the bridge and use your sniper rifle to take out all the enemies that drop in front of the bridge. There may be a sniper jackal, a cliff on the right hand side which killed me and actually I had to kill Chaklock again because I didn't get a checkpoint. So make sure you're ending mission and reloading to prevent this. Make your way north and capture that new forward operating base. You're gonna call in another vehicle and grapple fly all the way to excavation site. Now once you actually activate the mining laser, you're going to get ambushed by a bunch of brutes. I'm going to assume that you're playing it normally and you're not doing the invulnerability glitch. So now go and do that if you're planning to do that. But for everybody else who's playing it normally or with the tank gun glitch, you can actually end game right after that cutscene and reload. And then you won't have to worry about dying and it takes the pressure off you. You may die a couple times because you get ambushed by different enemies. Pick them off as best you can. You can rocket them, you can snipe them, you can throw grenades, dynamo grenades to freeze them. There's a lot of jackal snipers in this area, so it's really going to be take your time, take out the enemies, slowly progress, and use grunts and blue shield jackals to get your shields back. If you grapple hook a jackal, it will stun them even if you hit their shields. You have an opening to fly in and hit them. The reason why I don't say do it on the orange jackal is because they have manglers and they can three hit you and they're deadly accurate. So the enemies you want to use to get your shields back are grunts and blue shield jackals. As a little side note, all of the grunts will have electric weaponry and be ultra grunts because of the thunderstorm skull which will drain your health over time. So getting into the habit of punching them to get your shields back is fantastic. The best advice I can give with this area to disable the mining laser it can be very frustrating to just run in and die, especially to the shade turrets that are very deadly. But it's not an area you can just rush through. You just have to take all the enemies out, focus one single area, make sure your shields are up so you can get checkpoints. And once you've taken out both side objectives, it's time for the next brute boss fight. Now basses you can actually cheese out very well. You can either put a bunch of fusion coils on the ground and one hit him like you do with Jager. Or you can jump on this window ledge here. He will try to throw grenades at you. You can jump from ledge to ledge. He won't be able to hammer you. With your unlimited ammo, just keep throwing grenades, shooting rocket launchers at him, and he's not too bad. The next mission is all indoors. So you want to take it room by room, keep rocket launching, sniping, and throwing lots of dynamo grenades. Alternatively, using the scorpion gun, just absolutely obliterate everything, and it's not too bad. The one area that is annoying in here, the skimmer's introduction. Now you may go think, I'm gonna go camp on the side, but for this skimmer section, you are going to go to the grab lift, and as shown on screen here, keep lifting backwards and forwards. The skimmers won't be able to hit you with their rocket launchers because the thunderstorm skull actually gives the skimmers all rocket launchers and the brutes that are aggro that just run at you won't be able to hit you because you keep flying through the sky. I was surprised that this strategy works so well, but they overwhelm you much too quickly. 
if you stay on the ground. Once you complete this section, there'll be two brute chieftains. And again, these chieftains would be annoying if you didn't have unlimited ammo, but throwing lots of dynamo grenades to freeze them, combined with all of your explosives, burn through enough ammo and they will die. With that, it shows the Harbinger's introduction. It'll be morning on the ring, and there'll be a spire very close in front of you. With that mission complete, end the game, ring load, and start making your way towards the spire. Now this will actually be the very first introduction of Hunters once you reach the base of the Spire. And since the Thunderstorm Skull is on, it will be the Red Banished Hunters. They are very, very accurate. You have a couple options here. One, once they've spawned in, you can run to a vantage point outside their range and just keep spamming them with sniper bullets until they die. Two, you can actually keep popping up and down and keep rocket launching them. Or three, scorpion gun them and they die within three to four hits, especially if you hit them in the crit spot. What I'm really trying to illustrate is that lasso isn't too difficult in this game because of the unlimited ammo. All these strategies you can do to cheese your way through it make it so much easier. Once you enter the spire, absolutely nothing to worry about, but it will be the very first encounter with the sentinel boss. He is also very easy to kill. If you are no shields, again, end game, reload. You won't have to worry about dying, using your rocket launcher or your sniper or any gun really. Just snipe off his arms, keep running around in a circle around the room, and take him out. This brings us to the AA section where you have to take out the three anti-air cannons where your pelican actually crashes. Now this section on regular and legendary was quite difficult for me first time playing it through. Those two Spartan killers took me like 30 to 45 minutes, but once I found a strategy, it wasn't too bad. For the actual AA guns themselves, all you have to do is find any vehicle, and there's a whole bunch scattered, I'll show someone screen now, and just use them to launch across the map. If you can put yourself on top of a cliff with your sniper and rocket launcher again, just pick everything off, take your time and kill everything. Half the time, all you have to do is just fire rocket launchers in their general direction, and they'll fly away from the cowbell skull anyway. Keep doing this to take out all three anti-air cannons. There's a few Spartan cores that you can actually get in this area, so I'll throw them up on the map so you can actually see them. The real tough bit in this area is the Spartan killers. One of them will sit up top, and the other will sit in the chopper. Now the chopper can one hit kill you. If you hijack the chopper, they can also one hit kill you. And if you go too far away after hijacking the chopper, it will pull out a sniper rifle and one hit you in the head. So I found this spot where you can actually head glitch and just use your sniper to take out everything and combine that with the rocket launcher and it makes it so much easier. It may take you a couple tries to actually kill them, but once they're dead, that will end the mission. I'll cut to some music now and let you guys watch how I took them out. This brings you onto the mission with the four signals and the four towers, and it's surprisingly very, very easy. It's so open world, and you get a banshee at the very start. You fly all the way around to the first tower that I'm going to show on screen now, and you can just use your sniper to pick everything off. If you're worried about dying, go sit up on a hill or a cliff and just pick them off at your leisure. When they're all dead, go into the tower. There are Spartan cores on each tower. So make sure you look for them and get them. You can hit down on your D-pad and they'll illuminate in orange. They're very easy to find. They're very, very close to the towers themselves. And if you've played the campaign already, you might actually know where they are already. Once you take out this first tower, we're gonna to capture the one forward operating base. We're gonna use it as a platform to launch across to the other towers if you don't have an air vehicle. If you still have your Banshee, you can just fly to the other bases at your leisure. But if your Banshee got damaged, and you don't want to be stranded out there, or you're going to die, and you want to quickly fast travel, it's a nice forward operating base to have. And it's as simple as throwing a grenade underneath, grappling onto it, and flying in the direction of the tower. Now with the blind skull, you can't actually see how far something is away, but it will have a massive blue beam up into the sky, so you can see where you're going to aim. The only annoying section I found in this area was the tower with two wraiths, there was a few shock rifle brutes, and they're deadly accurate. So just keep an eye out for them. They will kill you if you're in the open. Once you've gone to all four towers, we're going to swap out the sniper rifle 
for an arcane sentinel beam. You won't be doing any long range sniping. The arcane sentinel beam is fantastic against sentinels, which you're gonna be versing a lot of. And the rocket launcher is obviously very hard to hit a sentinel at long range. So I'm gonna put the boss up on screen that you have to go and kill. Go to his location, finish him off, and then head to the final main spire for Nexus. Keep in mind, once you go in here, you're locked into the end game and you cannot go to any other side missions. So if there's anything else you want to do, do it before you enter the spire. Now this indoor section with a rocket launcher and an arcane sentinel beam, most of the areas actually are copy and pasted throughout the campaign. So if you found it not too bad, getting through the indoor sections thus far, you're gonna be fine for the rest of the campaign. Since most of the areas are copy paste, I'm just gonna quickly cover all the areas that I found annoying. One, the hunter fight before the gondola, just before you drop down the huge hole. You can get a checkpoint just before you enter this room, so make sure you have full shields. Two, the second annoying thing is that once you pass the gondola, and when you're gonna put the three seeds into the sockets where they're talking about Halo's past history, there'll be nothing but sentinels, and that makes it especially hard to get your shields back. With the arcane sentinel beam, you should be okay, but you can always drop their shields, because all the sentinels will have shields because of the thunderstorm skull, and then grapple onto it and punch them, and you get your shields back. Aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. You blow up the enemies, you shred them with the sentinel beam, and you slowly progress, taking out one area at a time. The next area of interest is the second boss, with the sub-monitor that becomes a big sentinel, big mech-y thing. And it's a very easy way to beat him. The middle circular structure. All you have to do is fire a rocket launcher, and then when he's about to fire, walk slightly around the circle, and just keep running him in circle. He spawns in sentinels, prioritize them, keep walking in a circle. Your arcane sentinel beam will shred all the sentinels again. But once he's dead, you'll be heading to the top of the spire, and all you have to do is take out three phantoms, and the mission is complete. The three phantoms are very easy. You have rockets, you can pick up skewers if you want them, there's skewers there. The reason why I haven't suggested using a skewer throughout the campaign is it's not that useful. The long reload time, even with the explosive one, just isn't worth it. And you get unlimited grenades, so by spamming lots of dynamo grenades anyway, having the sentinel beam and then the rocket launcher, you've got every range covered. With that said, we'll head through the portal from the weapon, end the game, reload your mission, make sure all your stuff is saved, and now we're almost at the end of the campaign. Making your way to the surface is very easy. Again, it's a lot of copy and pasted areas, enemies you've fought already before, so just take it a room at a time and slowly progress. Really, the next area of interest is the road. We actually reach the surface. All you want to do is take out the first initial enemies on the road, grab the Warthog, line it up, and make sure that your flying trajectory is straight through the middle of the map. You can use a thruster pack to correct it if it's slightly off, but you can skip that entire section of the road and go right to the House of Reckoning. Try and land exactly where I do so you can activate the bridge and just quickly go across. Now the House of Reckoning has four different things we're going to be covering. That is the basic training, advanced training, Jaeger, and then Esherim. Three out of four of those are very, very easy. With your rocket launcher and your arcane sentinel beam, you're going to want to sit exactly where I'm showing on screen now. You can get a sniper rifle and juggle it over to where you're sitting. That will allow you to pick off enemies from afar. But the good thing about the basic training and the advanced training is there's every single weapon. So you can pick whichever weapon you like. With your unlimited ammo and grenades, you can sit back where I'm showing here. For the basic training, there'll be no hunters, so it will just be sit back, take out enemies, you see a grunt, grapple, melee, repeat. For the advanced training, when Esherim says, I've prepared some of our best and brightest, that's where the hunters spawn. You can quickly drop down to throw lots and lots of dynamo grenades directly below where you are standing and quickly grapple back up before you get taken out by other enemies. Or you can literally just sit where you are and the hunters won't come up until you kill one of them. So you want to damage them equally. One bullet here, one bullet there. If for any reason you happen to kill one and the other one aggressively rushes you, this spot is great because you can run around the boxes they can't follow you and you can break line of sight. This will allow you to pop out, do more damage, and then hide again. Since the hunters aren't too aggressive, you can sit back, take out the other enemies, and then leave the hunters till last. Next up, we have the Jaeger boss fight, and it's actually very simple. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm just gonna play it on screen now, but the same strategy works as Bassus. Put lots of fusion coils on the floor. Get all 15 fusion coils, stack them in a pile, exactly where I'm showing on screen, and he will run into it, 
and you quickly take him out. Combine it with the Arcane Sentinel Beam, your Rocket Launcher, and your Grenades, and you will kill him, no problem. If you took any damage during that fight, as soon as you come up to Eshram, he will one hit you if you're no shield before you can even move straight after the cutscene. So what you want to do, as soon as the cutscene ends and the boss fight begins with Eshram, you hit start, end game, and then reload. It'll put you at the bottom of the elevator, you grapple straight up, and you won't have to worry about dying, and you will have your shields back. If you have the scorpion gun, you can literally one hit the boss. The cowbell skull will send him flying into the wall, and he'll die from splatter damage. If you have the rocket launcher and the arcane sentinel beam, it'll be a lot of shoot, grapple away, slide around walls, and repeat. Especially when he gets down to his final phase where he's running at you with a diminisher of hope. You can stun him with your rocket launcher and use that valuable time to grapple all the way around the corner. Rinse and repeat. If you get close to him, he will kill you. If you are sprinting and you grapple onto a wall, as soon as you land, if you hit slide, you will keep your momentum and be able to slide all the way around a corner and travel a much further distance, so I would highly recommend doing that. With Eshram defeated, we are finally onto Silent Auditorium, the final level of Halo Infinite's Lasso. This whole level is relatively short, it's very simple. There might be a lot of enemies at the start, but you don't have to rush them. Just like the rest of the campaign, you can just spam grenades and take your time, and it's all good. The one area of interest in this mission is, of course, the final boss fight. Now to ensure that you get a checkpoint every single time, there's three checkpoints available during the fight after every stage of the Harbinger. You can either melee a grunt, you can melee the Harbinger herself when she drops down to being no shields and she's on the floor. I actually did a little bit of testing before I made this video and it actually seems like shields or no shields, you will get one per section of the boss fight once you complete the stage. I can't imagine how much harder it would be if you didn't get a checkpoint for the entire boss fight because her orbs can fire around walls and they will kill you but mainly the main big annoyance is the final brute chieftain that can run very quickly i saw lots of people online saying oh this brute chieftain keeps killing me he jumps a thousand meters at me the strategy for that is actually very simple if you see him running at you at all just jump down he'll have to jump off when you grapple instantly straight back up he'll have to run all the way around again so as long as you do that and rinse and repeat, he will not get near you. He won't be able to jump at you and it makes him really easy to kill. The Arcane Sentinel Beam does a lot of work here. It absolutely shreds any enemies that rush you. A Cinder Shot can also be helpful in this area if you don't feel like your rocket launcher is doing enough damage. There is plenty around the room. The best thing about the Cinder Shot is you can actually direct where that bullet is going. So even if they evade it, you can track them by zooming in and controlling the pellet with your thumbstick or your mouse. After enough attempts, you will finally beat the boss fight and congratulations, you've beaten Halo Infinite Legendary All Skulls on. This video took me days, I mean actual days, to record, come up with strategies, then get all the gameplay for it. I ran Lasso twice, traditional and with the Scorpion Gun. So hopefully, there were some handy tips and tricks throughout this video, things you may not have known that will save you some time. I tried to use all my knowledge of the game to make it as easy as I could for you guys. Again, all the indoor sections are pretty copy and paste, so even if I didn't go into extreme detail with them, you'll be fine. But thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed this mammoth video, probably the biggest video I've ever done in terms of length. But thank you all so much for watching.